Hello everyone, the Chart Guys have been working on an introductory technical analysis course for quite some time now, and after surveying hundreds of traders with what would be the most sought after information regarding technical analysis, we came up with this course, When to Enter and Exit. It covers over five hours of the basics on when to enter and exit, and we feel after watching this course, it will help build a foundation of technical analysis knowledge, which will eliminate a lot of the uncertainty in the world of trading stocks. So the course outline, we go over the psychology of trading, establishing a game plan, the different indicators we use to signal a bullish and bearish entry, how to recognize support and resistance levels, poor entries where traders make mistakes, exit targets, how do you know where to sell your trade, where to place stop losses, that's very important, minimizing losses is what keeps you in the game long term, my personal preparations, how I go about getting ready for each trading day, and then piecing it all together, utilizing all the information we just learned and how to apply that in the real world for making successful, profitable trades. As a bonus, we also include a lot of information on finding entries and exits utilizing patterns. And you can find these patterns on every time frame on pretty much any stock and commodity trading. And certainly being able to recognize those patterns can give you an edge as well. So we hope you will check this out. Again, it's an introductory level course. So if you are new to technical analysis and trying to get a firm grasp on things and seeming feeling a little bit overwhelmed, then this course is for you. I hope you check it out. Appreciate you watching. Hello everyone, checking back in on the Canadian MJ sector. We'll look at all of the normal names here. Then I'll zoom in on the five minute time frame to look at some of the high volatility trading opportunity today. So we had a gap down open after a very bearish day yesterday on increased bear volume. So we knew or we know that gap ups are for selling and gap downs are generally for buying. That has been the pattern that we have been in most certainly for the gap ups being for selling. That's pretty much every single time it happens in the past month. That has been the scenario. So after a bearish day and after really four red days in a row, seeing a gap down open and one last final push to the downside has us looking for a bullish entry looking for even just a short-term bounce and even if it was just a day trade that was the direction to be looking and i'll go into the details on the five minute time frame a little bit early originally looking for the bounce but we'll go into where to potentially have put stop losses and minimize losses and all of that good stuff so on the daily time frame across the sector we have bullish reversal candlesticks forming we have seen this plenty of times in terms of bullish reversal candlesticks the most notable example look at the price action from december 1st to December 7th. It was four red days in a row, much like the four red days here, a final gap down open, and then the bull showed up. And it was a lot stronger on that example, but it's a fairly similar example where we had the gap down open, a final push, and then the bull showed up. But what I want to point out is the lack of confirmation. This is a solid bullish reversal candlestick, no confirmation the following day. We had a strong close, so we had a gap up open, and everybody sold that gap up open, and we closed at the low of the day. So we have not seen a solid bullish reversal candlestick since the high on December 1st, the high of the bounce, and it's been nothing but lower highs and lower lows since then due to the lack of that confirmation. So the point being, all of these names must see a strong day tomorrow, a nice green day closing above the high of today, confirming the bullish reversal candlestick and letting us know that the bulls are going to be in control of the short term. So they still have a lot of work to do. This is just step one of the bullish reversal candlestick. I know a lot of people were getting in bullish positions, and that gives us a nice setup if in a bullish position to look for further gains tomorrow because we did have strength at the end of the day. And as we know, strength at the end of the day usually translates to strength next morning. The thing is, the bulls almost, if you're looking for more than just a quick flip, you almost don't want to see a gap up open because of the time and time again where that is a sell signal. So if I were a bull and I wanted to hold for a week here, I would want to see an open right where we closed and then a bull break of the high of today, 944, shortly thereafter. That would have me the most confident. But either way, if we do see a gap up open, we know there's going to be a lot of profit taking and we'll likely pull back and back test this 50-day moving average support. That level is 897. And as you can see, although we dipped well below it, on the daily chart, what matters is where the candlestick closes. So we held that 50-day support, formed a bullish reversal candlestick. This is a doji, and we're looking for a confirmation candlestick tomorrow. The weekly time frame, this is still a bullish weekly chart, and we could pull all the way back to $6. And I just looked at this candlestick here, that little consolidation 
before the big time breakout, that's 554. As long as we form a higher low compared to 554, we're still forming higher lows and higher highs on this long-term trend. So this is still normal healthy consolidation. It is still a bull flag. You could make that argument. And the bull flag pattern, I can draw it real quick. It's when you have a strong move to the upside. There's your flagpole and your bull flag is a parallel support and resistance line of trading. And it's a perfect bull flag at this point. And a bull flag indicates continuation when you see a break out of this channel and head back towards the highs that we have seen. Now, that could be a long time away. It could be multiple weeks away. But this currently fits the bull, pack, bull flag pattern, and so does, does the decreasing volume here. This is exactly what the bulls want to see on consolidation, decreasing volume while we consolidate. So the majority of the rest of these candlesticks, or these charts, I should say, are going to be a pretty similar setup. So for MT bullish reversal candlestick the big red flag for these names though let's go back to that so cgc here we saw the range was tightening and i kept pointing out support of 975 and 960. if i were in this trade long term any if i were in this trade for any time frame as soon as 960 broke i would have had my stop loss at 958 and i would have been stopped out because that is a clear key level because once we break 960 the next previous price support is down at 765 we don't have any action in this range that has established support so back here we bounced off 960 we bounced off 975 this tight range of trading builds support levels and as soon as they break especially on increasing bear volume there was a lot of room to the downside and that's why we pulled back so severely the past two days so stop loss below just below 960 would have protected a lot of gains and allowed to be looking for a bullish entry potentially 10 percent cheaper to get back in so for mt that level was the low of this consolidation and that was 621 so in order to maintain the higher low higher high pattern 621 needs to hold and as soon as 621 breaks we then have a lower high and then a lower low so the trend changes in the short term right there where it was going from higher low to higher high, lower high, lower low. So 621, I would have put my stop loss at about 619. I always like to give a little bit of wiggle room because we know this isn't an exact science and we could see a quick break and then a little bounce. So I like to give a couple pennies of wiggle room. But either way, if you get stopped out at 619, you miss all the downside all the way down to 570 and that would have kept about 8% if you were stopped out. So again, stop losses are very key. And even if you're in it for the long haul, if you get stopped out, you can always reassess the situation. The likelihood that the, the chart is going to completely turn around and run away from you is very unlikely if your stop losses are at key levels, which change the trend. So this was a trend change as soon as you as that broke because you would only get stopped out if we set a lower low and broke the higher low pattern. So the odds of that happening, getting stopped out, and then for the stock to turn around and then run and leave you left in the dust is very very unlikely to happen so it's a bullish reversal candlestick here need a solid green day tomorrow middle bollinger band resistance is going to be just under 650 that will be a target bulls need to break 629 the high of today some candlesticks are stronger than others on these bullish reversals we can see we have where we closed six dollars there was a dump in mt right at the last five minutes and we can look at that if i remember here on the five minute chart but to get through to the high of the day it's a 5% move from where we closed. And for CGC to get to the high of the day from where we closed, it is a, let's see here, math off the top of my head, 19 cents. We are looking at less than 2.5%. So that's a big difference. We have half the percentage in terms of gains need to be made to break the high of the day for CGC than we do to MT. And I know they're trading linked together due to the deal they have together, but certainly worth charting them both individually so we have consolidation again same thing here for mt normal healthy consolidation you could draw a potential bull flag here as well so the long-term bulls if you are in this for the long haul talking years there is no concern of changing this trend at this point but that being said you could you know you could give up 20 percent and still be not giving up the trend but obviously you would have been able to purchase more shares if you had gotten out in cash and then reassess the situation so all these game plans need to be established once you make your position APH bullish reversal candlestick the big red flag for APH APH and OGI we were 
hi highlighting how the range was very clearly tightening. Higher lows and lower highs, tighter, tighter, tighter. It was the most clear tightening pattern. It broke yesterday on increased bear volume very significantly. You could have had all kinds of different stop losses here. The tightest stop loss would have been just below 496 to keep this higher low pattern because as soon as 496 breaks, you then break the higher low pattern. A little bit more lenient stop loss would have been below 485 and the loosest stop loss I would have had would have been below 469. Either way, saves from a big dump and could have allowed for cheaper entry. Bullish reversal of hammer, and for here, we closed at 449, the high of the day, 16 cents away. So we still have about 4% to go to break the high of the day on APH. So CGC set up better in terms of where we closed compared to the high of the day. Back test and rejection from the 50-day moving average resistance. We closed below it yesterday, lost it as support, and now it's acting as resistance, 462. Bulls need to see a break of 465 tomorrow, a solid green day confirming this reversal candlestick. Weekly time frame still fine for the bulls. We have a bit of a double bottom of 405 and 406. That is now a very, very important level to be holding. And that was the low of November 23rd. No other names besides ACB, which we'll get to in a minute, but no other names are close to that level. CGC, that's 765. We didn't get close there. And so it was a significant pullback for APH. And we now have that line of in the sand. That's a bottom fishing play. And a bottom fishing play is when you have a very clear support level, you make an entry just above that very clear support level, and you put your stop loss just below it. So a bottom fishing play with this 405 must hold support would have been an entry buy at 407, roughly. And I would have put my stop loss either at 403, or if I wanted to give that psychological $4 chance to hold, I put my stop loss at 398. So low risk in terms of the capital you're risking of getting stopped out, but high reward if you nail the bottom, which would have been the case here for this bottom fishing play and seeing a big time move to the upside. So the weekly time frame must hold 405, double bottom, and we'll see if the bulls can rally from here. Next week, this middle Bollinger Band will be right at that level as well. So if we were to lose 405 over the next week or two, it would also likely result in a loss of the weekly middle Bollinger Band. And no one else is close to their weekly middle Bollinger Band. CGC is still leaps and bounds ahead of it. MT well above it. So APH, key weekly support to keep an eye on. So ACB already broke the low of November 22nd, and that's due to the dilution and shares hitting the market and the market factoring that in. Still a lower high, lower low pattern, but we do have a support base here at $2. It is a bullish reversal doji, but look how much weaker it is compared to all those other candlesticks we just looked at. So we closed at 211. The high was 219. So eight cents, that's about 4% as well. So not entirely significant, but we didn't see as significant of, of buying the dip. Now that could be taken two ways. Obviously we didn't pull back as far and we didn't break the $2 support. So that's a good sign, but it also doesn't really show the bulls rushing in to buy that dip. Either way, it is a bullish reversal doji. And we also have the same need for confirmation, a green day tomorrow and a break of 219 to confirm that candlestick. ACB on the weekly, not as much information because of the lack of history here on the exchange. So don't really pay much attention to this. I do keep an eye on the higher lows that are in place and the lower highs. It's certainly a tightening range forming here, but the daily time frame gives us all that information in a little bit more detail. OGI wrapping it up, and this is one of the strongest closes. So same thing. We had this support here. The key break occurred yesterday on increased bear volume. Look at the volume get smaller, 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 big bear volume. That's a huge red flag for the bulls. So stop losses here would have been just below 310 if you wanted to be more lenient, just below 305. And after that level, after 305 support, we're looking down at 238. Huge movement to the downside before we encounter support. That is why we dumped so easily. Lack of previous price history means a lack of support. Same for resistance on the way up. Remember when we were in blue sky breakout, how easy it was? Gains hands over fist here. That's because of the lack of resistance the bulls easily went through those levels just like they easily went back through on the way down due to lack of price action and history. There was definitely price history here, but it's not significant because these are all new fresh levels. So it's a bullish reversal hammer. Resistance is $3 on the dot psychological. We closed at 294, so we only need 2%. We are the closest for breaking the high of today, only needing 2% compared to any other ticker we just looked at. So we need a break of $3, a solid green day, huge bull volume. That's a really good sign 
and we are still maintaining the higher low compared to OGI. So why is ACB the most bearish on the daily chart? Because it has already broken the low of November 23rd. Every single other name still has that support intact and still has a higher low compared to that level. That is why ACB is the most lead, is the, let's try that again. That is why ACB is the lead bear. And again, this has nothing to do with fundamentals, all to do with technical analysis and the setup of the chart. So OGI on the weekly time frame. Now we're close to the middle Bollinger Band here of 240. Need to keep an eye on that level. Bulls buying the dip with a long lower wick. But we need to see confirmation and a turnaround. So these are bullish reversal candlesticks on the weekly, which would need to see a green week. Obviously, we have three trading days left to go. So that's going to change the way that these candlesticks look. But definitely worth keeping an eye on this weekly chart for bullish reversal candlesticks heading into next week. So tomorrow is a very huge day for the sector, and we have to see green confirmation and a strong close. So let's look at the five-minute time frame. First, before I forget, let's just look at that MT end-of-the-day dump. Absolutely stood out, and people say, why are you even charting MT? Just look at CGC. Well, let's look at CGC. Look at the end of the day. Perfectly fine, nothing. And you look at MT, and look at this huge dump on huge volume. That is a huge discrepancy between the two, and that's why you look at both charts. Highest volume we saw in four hours, all bearish, all dumping at the end of the day, and giving back 3% right before the close. That is a terrible sign compared to everybody else. We didn't see that dump. Something's up there, and we need to be cautious of that heading into tomorrow. So CGC, let's go over how this played out on the five-minute time frame. Now, when we saw the gap down open was coming, I was looking for a bullish entry opportunity. And I was watching $9 psychological support because after breaking 960, the levels I started looking at were psychological because of the lack of previous price history. So I looked at 950, we broke that with the gap down open, and then $9. And we held $9 first thing. So that was another bottom fishing play where you put your buy just above $9 psychological support and you put your stop loss just below $9 psychological support because you can anticipate if that psychological level breaks, we're looking down at 850 as the next real psychological support. So we did get a short-term bounce. It ended up being about 2 2.5%. So not significant. There was a quick flip to be had there. But what it did allow is if you did make an entry in the low $9 range, it allowed you to put your stop loss at break even. And that way, worst case scenario, you get stopped out and you reassess the situation. No harm, no foul, no losses, which is an ideal scenario for a trader. So the big red flag here, look at the bear volume, look at the bull volume. This was a, an extremely weak bull bounce attempt. There's no volume there. And then look at the bears take back over. Huge increase in bear volume. The break of $9 quickly saw a drop down to 851. And that's that 850 psychological level coming into play. So... We did have a bunch of people get stopped out on this first attempt, which again, that's fine. Protect those losses. You missed a nice 5% move to the downside by getting stopped out just at $9. And then the bulls showed up here. This is where the volume really was telling. So we saw all bear volume to start the day. Now we're seeing, okay, bulls are buying the dip. Here's our bullish reversal candlestick. Here's the confirmation. Still a little skeptical because the volume was lower. There's our increase in bull volume. Now we know the bulls have some strength. So we reject just below the 20 period, five minute resistance. This is a bull flag. So I just showed it on the weekly time frame. It works on every single time frame. And here's a bull flag pull. Nice, big, strong move. Little bit of consolidation, normal and healthy. You could draw parallel support and resistance from that little channel. And if it seems a little too condensed, if you put this on the one minute time frame, that bull flag would look a lot more clear like a bull flag and more so like that weekly chart with a bunch more candlesticks. So the, the time frames allow you to look at things in a different light and get more details, but that's a bull flag, which is a continuation pattern. Look at the bull volume pickup. So first off, look at the bear volume decreasing exactly what the bulls want to see on consolidation, bull volume increasing for 15 minutes and breaking to a higher high. So the day has started out with lower highs and lower lows on every bounce attempt. Now we have a higher low and a higher high. The trend changed right then and there. And then from there, bulls saw a really nice run up to 933. So even if you were late on the move, even if you wanted the 20 period moving average to be support, to be confident, you could have got in at 890 and seen a nice, oh, what's that? 4%, 5% move to the upside. We consolidated, we formed support at 901. There's that $9 psychological level coming in again. 
So 901 now established as support. Tightening range, trading sideways, consolidating. Bulls showing back up again with a spike in volume. And here we are hitting a new high of the day. When the bulls did this at the end of the day, that gave me a lot of confidence that we were going to see these bullish reversal candlesticks close strong without a lot of profit taking. We did see a little bit of profit taking, a little, a little scare here with that increase in bear volume, but bulls quickly recovered and we traded fairly even there in the last 15 minutes. No big dump, bulls defending that low of support, 909. So what stands out through all of that? A lot of talking there. I know it might be a little overwhelming. Psychological support levels absolutely came into play today due to the lack of price history, the trend, lower highs and lower lows, the volume was huge, recognizing patterns, bull flags, and looking for continuation tomorrow. So I'm done talking. I appreciate you watching. And we'll see if we get those green days tomorrow. Must see a nice solid green day to confirm the reversal candlestick form today. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful night.